So at the typical age of onset of a patient with follicular lymphoma is in the late 60s to early 70s. This gentleman in his 70s is fairly typical of uh, the type of patient that should be. His uh, initial disease behavior was uh, fairly aggressive with the noting of B symptoms, so fevers, uh, as well as weight loss at the time of his initial diagnosis. And he was started on a standard chemoimmunotherapy regimen, RCHOP, which in the United States was one of the more commonly used chemoimmunotherapy regimens in years gone by. There now are several other options that are available uh, to patients, which would include venomustine rituximab, which is another option, or now even lenalidomide uh, rituximab, which is another option for patients in the frontline setting uh, at present. What is uh, reasonably concerning about this patient was the fact that he had early relapse of his disease. So this is a gentleman who had relapse within two years of his initial diagnosis. About 20% of individuals with follicular lymphoma will have relapse within two years of diagnosis. When that happens, their expected outcomes are remarkably poorer than the standard patient with follicular lymphoma. When we see this, the kinds of things that we think about are the potential or need for enrollment in a clinical trial or in a combination chemoimmunotherapy regimen and potentially considering transplantation, autologous stem cell transplant for younger individuals with follicular lymphoma. And then after his uh, second relapse, he then proceeded on to have a third relapse. And with that third relapse, he was treated with an approved agent in that setting, a PI3 kinase inhibitor, idelalisa. When we think about uh, predicting outcomes for patients with follicular lymphoma, the FLIPI and FLIPI2 scores are now available prognostic markers that we can use uh, for patients. The FLIPI score consists of age, uh, with the, the hallmark being age greater than 60, stage uh, either three or four, uh, hemoglobin, of being less than 12 and having more than four nodal sites involved uh, with those nodal sites defined by a flippy map in terms of the nodal areas that uh, need to be considered. And then also having an elevated lactate dehydrogenase or LDH. For our particular patient, he was an individual who, had, uh, who was older than the age 60. He had stage four disease. He had low hemoglobin uh, and had more than four nodal sites involved and an elevated uh, LDH. So he would fall into the flippy high risk category where the flippy risk uh, for each one of those factors scores one point. And flippy risk groups can be defined uh, into a low and intermediate and a high risk group. For those patients who fall into the flippy scores that uh, have a low risk uh, group assigned to it, their expected 10 year overall survival is approximately 70%. For those who fall into the high risk uh, category, their expected overall survival at 10 years is about 35 or 36 percent. So clearly very different uh, outcomes for those two patient populations. Like the FLIPI uh, categories, the FLIPI 2 has been a prognostic scoring system that is a predictor of progression-free survival. It again uses the categories of age greater than 60 uh, and hemoglobin, uh, but substitutes additional categories having a single lymph node that is bigger than six centimeters as that measure of bulk, having bone marrow involvement, and having an elevated beta-2 microglobulin. And so this patient had an elevated beta-2 microglobulin uh, and had bone marrow involvement as well as uh, being over the age of 60 and having a uh, hemoglobin less than 12. So again, would fall into the flippy 2 poor risk category, which is associated with worse outcomes. 